We were just talking there how you started off in student loans but have then moved into new products. It's mortgages, there's life insurance. What other products will you bring online when you get to this new financing? Sure, so today we're very heavy on the credit side. So mortgages, personal loans, student loan refinancing. We started to do wealth management and are looking at how to build out our asset management business. Insurance is an important component to that. But I think in 2017, one of the biggest solutions that we'll bring to market is a deposit account and a credit card. And that effectively allows us to deliver a full service of solutions into our member base so that they really don't need to go anywhere else for, for what they need from a financial standpoint. I mean, interestingly, I come from Europe where I was banking with N26 in Germany. We've seen Monzo in the United Kingdom. We've seen Red, plenty of other startups. Is this where the competition is or actually is it the competition coming from the banks that they start to work out that fintech is where they need to get ahead? So we, we see much more competition from the banks. I think uh, we're going after a, a very rich target in terms of that 25 to 45 year old customer demographic. It's uh, very important to the banks in terms of building those relationships and so whether it's student loan refinancing or, or, or personal loans or mortgages we're seeing much more bank competition today than we saw a year ago and it's very important for us to differentiate through our value proposition. Therefore, your value proposition say you differentiate it, you've got all these different products. How long until you take the competition to the fintechs in Germany, to the fintechs in the UK? Talk to us about international expansion. So we're, we're going to do Australia first in 2017, but we've got a path to go to the UK uh, and to go to broader Asia as well. And so it's very important for us to deliver that market or deliver into that market. And it's the same value proposition. It's being able to deliver speed and convenience and alignment and transparency, uh, something that's missing in a lot of these markets for this uh, millennial type customer. I mean, what you've done in terms of setting yourself apart is help foster the careers of some of these students. You know, you've got the entrepreneur meet and greets. People come around to your house and get to understand you and, and, and be given advice. How do you scale that? And indeed, how much is it hurt by when you've got things like Lending Club not doing quite so well in the press? Does that hurt you from a an investor and a consumer point of view. So we have 200,000 members and if they all came to my house I, I'd have a lot of trouble so <laughs> we, we, we don't do that but but what we do do is we do a lot of offline events we've had about 10% of our member base go to offline events whether that's career services where we help people navigate salary negotiations or get reemployed or, or the entrepreneur program where we help people start companies or our dating events which are massively oversubscribed for our members and, and hopefully they can create more household units I can sell mortgages to out of that. Um, it's an important component of what we do it's really a part of our differentiation and what we're finding is the community is beginning to support itself so people set up these events with our support but it's not a situation where everyone's coming to my house <laughs> those are back in the day but back in the day talk to me about the regulatory perspective here though I'm looking at the United Kingdom suddenly listening to what's happening in peer-to-peer -peer, looking at what's happening in crowdfunding and getting a little bit worried and we're talking about the UK which is actually a very forward-thinking open regulatory environment where do you see regulation changing here and for your business? So we're optimistic about the regulatory environment over the next couple of years. I think the OCC's initiative to do a fintech lending charter is a step in the right direction. It's one where we can move away from the disparate state regulation that we have today and do a unified national regulator. And, and we hope more of that comes uh, as, as the regulators get more and more comfortable with the industry and comfortable with the people involved. IPA 2017? Uh, well, I always get in trouble when I say when the IPO is coming. So I, I think we, we definitely want to go public. It's important for the business. I think that today we have the luxury of being profitable and, and, and growing at the clip that we're growing at. We have the luxury to determine when we do that. And, and we'll do that when it makes the most sense.